Subhanahu wa ta'ala has alhamdulillah given us iman and belief and a great adheem favor that Allah Ta'ala has given to us on top of iman alongside iman which is a great great favor of Allah there's no greater favor than this and that is the Quran al Karim. The Quran Majid, the Quran Hakim is such a nur, is such a light about which we cannot even imagine. It is a total nur, complete nur. The whole of Quran is nur and light and guidance for us and for mankind. This doesn't mean that the whole Quran, if you read the whole Quran, you will get the nur of the Quran. Or if you read half of the Quran, you will get nur. Allah Ta'ala says even three verses or three chapters or three juz, one ruku, one segment of a juz, all of this is nur. Rather, if a person reads one verse of the Qur'an, he recites, on the day of judgment, that verse will become light for him on the day of judgment. Just the one verse, if you extrapolate this from the hadith, one verse recitation will be light for you on the day of judgment. So if you read one ayah, you forget in your life you recited this verse. But on the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala said, when you will not remember the deeds that you committed, and there will be total tribulation and sweat and heat and pressure. And when that verse will come in front of us and be presented in the darkness of the day of judgment, in a form of light, that verse that we recited in this dunya will come in front of us and say, Allah, He recited me. This is one verse. Allah Ta'ala said, the kalam, my kalam, the Qur'an is such that every light of the verse of the word, the ha, the saad, the seen, the kha, every letter that you recite in a word, the fatha, the dhamma, the kasra, each of the vowels is nur, is light. Forget about the sentence or the verse. Just the vowels is nur. Allah Ta'ala said upon this nur, the mercy that I've given to the believers is that Allah says, you cannot maybe always see this nur in the world, but you can feel the benefit of this nur. And sometimes you can see the benefit of the nur. Allah Ta'ala gives people basira. Allah Ta'ala gives people vision. Allah Ta'ala gives people experience that they do the mushahada. They experience the nur of the Quran in this world. And the ahl basira the people of vision, farasat, are those people who have done tazki and tafsiyah of their heart, of their nafs, they've eliminated the impurities from their hearts, they have struggled, they've strived, they've cleansed themselves, they've purified themselves. Like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said in a famous dua, that, Oh Allah, please make my heart so clean and pure, just like a white cloth, when it is clean, it is totally white and crystal clear. So this heart, when you do tazki on the heart, tafsiya on the heart, on the nafs, and you struggle and strive and eliminate the dirt and the sins from the heart, it becomes so full of light and white, the heart and the nafs can see such things that your mind cannot contemplate. Allah says the basira, the vision, the farasat of the heart, Allah Ta'ala, whatever He shows it, it can see the vision of reality. And the heart totally changes then. When a person strives, makes effort, does tazkiya cleans, purifies, and the people who strive in their life, their hearts become clean, and they can start to see the reality. They have kash, they have vision, inspiration, Allah Ta'ala gives them. So when you strive and struggle and wash, you do dhikr of Allah, adhkar, company of the righteous, the pious, then the heart comes into reality. Then the heart becomes full of nur, it gets clean, and it starts to absorb the good things. Just like good things absorb good things, and bad things absorb bad things. One of our mushaykh, one of our pious predecessors in the early days, in the first few generations, there was a great buzurg, sheikh that passed away. Many people in history who are good, you can read about them. And he was illiterate. He wasn't educated, rather. 
he was quite illiterate, you could say. But he did tazkiyah, tafsiyah, he purified his heart, he strived, he struggled, he cleaned his heart, he grabbed all of his nafs, controlled his nafs. Allah Ta'ala gave him the maqam of basira. And he was a person who then became sahib basira. In other words, he started to experience and see the reality of life and the deen of Allah. And due to this status of Basirat, what was his situation? That if you recited Quran in front of him, or Hadith, or if a scholar was speaking to him, or a narration was presented to him, when he was asked, then very quickly he would give the answer, that you recited this Quran, this verse, this letter, this Hadith, this narration, this chain back to the Prophet ﷺ. Quickly he would say, he said, you've recited this verse from this juice, from this surah, this page number. And people used to test him, they'd come with a Hadith kitab, he'd say, this is this Hadith from this Sahabi, from this kitab, from this narration. Someone said, Hazrat, where did you get this knowledge from? How do you know that this hadith is not you haven't read Quran, you are illiterate, you haven't recited, you haven't learnt hadith in Darsay Nazami. He said, No, 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 this is not necessary to do it that way. Rather, the case is such that this is not my kamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts noor in every action, in every deed. So if you say that I have not learnt, that's not my problem. But Allah Ta'ala has given me the knowledge. The Quran is the greatest nur. When a person recites the Quran, then the nur comes into my heart. And I know that this is Quran. And I identify where this is being recited in the Quran. And when somebody recites the hadith, I say, ah, this is the hadith from this collection, from this sahabi. He said, this is nur. And because my heart is clean, Allah Ta'ala allows me to identify that nur. So Quran and hadith is like this, brothers. The Quran, the words of Allah, this is nur. There's nur in everything, in the verses of the Quran, the chapters of the Quran. If we can't see it, that's our fault. That's our problem. We've got yaqeen, but we need to develop this yaqeen. We need to benefit from this nur of the Quran. So what I'm trying to say to you, if I summarize, is that alhamdulillah, the words I'm presenting today are attached to Ramadan. Ramadan is coming. Quran is an Azim kitab. Allah said that one verse of the Quran will become nur and light for you on the day of judgment. And now we've got such a great opportunity coming. This great, great month of Ramadan, which is linked to the Quran. Quran and Ramadan are interlinked. They are joined, they are attached. The nur of Quran in Ramadan, Allah Ta'ala says, I increase the intensity of the nur. I increase and multiply the intensity. In normal days, you recite Quran, you look at Quran, you practice Quran, you get the nur of Quran. But in Ramadan, when you do khatamul of Quran, recitation of Quran, and uh, tarawih of Quran, you'll get azim, azim nur of the Quran. And the more you want to collect and save for thereafter, you can in Ramadan. Don't be lazy brothers, the question doesn't arise. Such a unique, unique chance, it comes once a year. And how do we know that next year Ramadan will come to us? Collect and save as much as you can in this Ramadan. Yes, eight, nine days left to go. Collect one week to go. Collect, read Quran yourself. Listen to the Quran. For example, if you can't read Quran, then listen to the Quran at least. Try to read it. Learn how to read it. If you can't read, you're illiterate. You're not skilled. Then listen. The elders, the pious people says, say that reading and listening, same reward. If you're not capable of reading, then listen to the Quran. Allah Ta'ala, mashallah, in this day and age, the day of advancement, Allah Ta'ala has prepared for us the whole Quran in the form of Taraweeh. We can stand for 30 days, 29 days. And you are jahil, anpar, illiterate. You're not educated. You stand in the saf. You listen to the Taraweeh. You get the reward of reading the whole Quran just by listening to the Quran in Taraweeh. So Allah is the one who gives. Allah wants excuses to give. So Allah Ta'ala says, I've not kept Ramadan empty for you. You could say, oh, I can't read Quran and I'm illiterate, I'm too busy. But Allah Ta'ala says, no excuses in this month. I've prepared for you that you come to Taraweeh after Isha and you hear the whole Quran in the month. It's our fault. We say, oh, you know, we read Quran during the day. But you can read as much as you want. But after one Taraweeh, you can complete the Quran, start Taraweeh again with the Quran. It's up to us how we make the structure and the method. Allah has given open, free reign that you can gather the luggage for the hereafter. There's there's no question about negligence and laziness in Ramadan. Brothers, be awake, be alert, and make a schedule in your life, and bring Quran into your life in Ramadan. Make a total intense schedule, have fikr and worry that Quran and Ramadan are linked. These are two nur that Allah Ta'ala has given to us in one go. And make a total schedule, and do justice to the seconds, every second in Ramadan. Let's do justice. Those who are half of the Quran, walking, memorize the Quran, recite the Quran. And those people who are not half of, who cannot read the Quran, make a schedule, try to learn the Quran. Try to learn the Qur'an and read the Qur'an. And another point I'd like to say that Ramadan is coming, so we can get all the thawab and the rewards. There's no doubt you will recite Qur'an, you'll get the reward of the Qur'an. But brothers, there's one important point. These are words I've heard from the pious predecessors that I'm presenting to you. There are two colors of the Qur'an. Two effects of the Qur'an. One effect of the Qur'an is in the form of the physical book. 
that we read. This is the book that's on the shelf. And the other form of the Qur'an is in the physical personality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was the walking, talking, living, physical personification of the Qur'an. So one is the book Qur'an on the shelf, and one is the physical Qur'an. So Allah Ta'ala has made it incumbent on us to do both. One is recitation of Qur'an. If you keep reciting the physical book, turning over the pages, we will not attain nothing. But Allah says, Rabbana atina atmimna la nurana. The totally you should have the nur in the hereafter. If you keep reciting the Qur'an, reading the pages, physical pages, Allah said, all you did was read the physical Qur'an. But what about the physical practice of the Qur'an, which is fard, compulsory. If you just do 50% and just read the Qur'an, put it back on the shelf and don't practice on it, then there's no justice done to the Qur'an. Allah says, you have to do both. You have to practice on the Qur'an. So how do we practice the Qur'an? How would you recite the practice of the Qur'an? If a person does that, he becomes a total qari. He becomes a total hafid. He becomes a lover of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If he does this. So reciting the Qur'an is through reading the words. And practicing the Qur'an is by imitating the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is imitated and obeyed and you follow his sunnah, then totally it is as if you are implementing the physical Qur'an. So it may not be Qur'an comes, Ramadan comes, and the 30th day comes and Eid comes, and all we did was read the physical pages. Our pious predecessors have said it is incumbent upon us. We have to totally follow Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's lifestyle, his personality, his sunnah, and only then have we done justice to the Quran. Not the physical Quran in one hand, but physically you have to implement the ways and the life of Rasulullah sallam. If you read Quran ten times in Ramadan and you don't follow every second his lifestyle, then you're not doing justice to your reading. Because you're opposing his lifestyle. You're opposing his sunnah. Every single second and his lifestyle, I'm not talking about farad, wajib, sunnah, muakada, sunnah, nafal, mustahab. No, the sahaba, every single practice of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam was beloved to the sahaba. They did not uh, disseminate and detach and break up and say farad, wajib, etc. I'm not saying to you, what are the masail? What I have heard from the pious predecessors that both things have to be done in the life of a Muslim. Read the Qur'an and practice the Qur'an. By reading the Qur'an, you'll become a person of knowledge. But by practicing the Qur'an, you will become the beloved follower of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, such that the total nur will come into you, in front of you in the judgment. Your form, your appearance, your attire, your lifestyle, your mannerism should become totally a reflection of the ways that the Prophet Wasallam used to like. How did he have his appearance? How did his face look? How did his appearance look? What is the labas that the Prophet ﷺ wore? All Ramadan, make it your practice, you will wear the attire and the labas and the dress code of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. The way he used to dress, the things he used to like to wear, the form and the appearance he liked and he disliked, we need to start to come into that path. Whatever things physically he did in his life, how he passed his day and his night, totally we need to learn that and bring that to our life. So when we do talawat of Qur'an, when we recite Qur'an, if we've got power and capacity to read 10 Qur'an in Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. If we stand up in Qiyam in the night of Ramadan, and recite the Qur'an, Alhamdulillah, do that to your full capacity. But in the same way, Allah Ta'ala has given us physical power, hands and legs and feet and brains and our bodies, then totally we have to utilize our physical body in imitation of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So when both things, the, the, both these things come in Ramadan, physical recitation of Qur'an, hearing Qur'an, and physical impersonation of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then only will the nur come into our life. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Inshallah we will now do the dhikr of Allah, recite the Durusharif.